Hi guys, Mookduke here, and today I'm going to walk you through the ultimate beginner's guide to the apparently dead game that is Maud Howe. This guide should cover everything you want to know in order to become hopefully good enough to hold your own against some of even the top players like Stouty Coaching, who is currently 0-1 against me, which technically makes me the number one Maud Howe player EU. So you should really trust what I'm saying. The reason I decided to make this guide was mainly due to boredom and the fact that I want new players to be able to enjoy my favourite game without getting turned off by any of the mechanics, toxicity or jankiness. Also, now is a good time for a quick reminder that the game is free on Epic from April 13th. Let it be said that no matter how much I tell you, you will die. A lot. You're just going to have to get used to it. There's no shame in this game most of the time at least. This game may also cause severe addiction when you get the hang of it, as this game shares a lot of similarity with Crack. Amazing. What is Mordhau? Mordhau is a first or third person medieval brawler. Kind of like COD, but replace the guns with swords and the throwing knives with, well, anything you can throw. And you can throw a lot of things. It's, it's probably the best part of the game in my opinion. Uh, a spiritual successor to the original chivalry game, but with much better fluidity. And if you count Shiv 2, don't. It's unfortunately one of the only games of this type currently on the market. Although this is looking to change with the release of games like Dark and Darker, Renown and Contingent. Mordhau has a few different modes available to play, including big team battles of invasion of the front line. And smaller, better modes such as Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, a last team standing skirmish mode, and the recently added sword game. Which is just a gun game, but you know, with swords. Great job! There is also a 1v1 and 3v3 ranked competitive mode and a horde mode against bots, but we'll save that for another time. As well as the official modes, there are also a few modded servers such as Duke of York, which has random weapons including lightsabers, dual servers where you can 1v1 other players without fear of being FFA'd from behind, sometimes, and some other really cool servers I'll let you find for yourself. But the point I'm trying to make is that there are multiple ways to play the game and they are all really good in their own way. Personally, I'd love to see them add like a 5v5 Rainbow Six style mode where you have to complete an objective, but that's just me. Okay, enough of the tangent. Getting started. Pre-warning, everything I'm about to suggest in this section is purely preference and could be controversial to others in the community, but this is the way I play, and as I have Stouty's head on my mantle and you don't, you might want to do the same. To keep it short, the game is mostly played in two ways, either the 240 system which uses mouse direction to determine swing direction, or keybinds for each swing which you might not be able to do depending on your hardware. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to pretend you have a mouse similar to the Logitech G502 I have and run you through how to set up the binds. You can tweak these for your own comfort or apply them however you like. Uh, if you do not have a similar mouse but do have a two thumb button mouse, I will explain similar bindings for that. The first thing I would suggest doing is opening up G-Hub or your mouse binding program and assigning the G8 button to the letter H on the keyboard and the weird side ADS button to L. If you can't do any of this, don't worry too much about it. There are other ways to set up your controls. You just have to find what is comfy for you. But I would definitely recommend binding most attacks if possible. Once you've done this, make sure your DPI is set to 800 and you are ready to launch the game. So you've opened the game and you're greeted with this screen. The first thing I would suggest doing is going up to the settings in the top right and changing your controls out of the 240 system to custom and untick all of the boxes, then click apply. Next, go to your action bindings and the first one you want to find is faint. Don't worry if you don't know what fainting is yet, I will explain everything after the controls are set. Change faint to left alt. The reason you want to do this is so your fingers never leave the movement buttons whilst in combat. You also want to unbind strike, make sure parry is set to the right mouse button and unbind stab. From here, we're going to set up the keys we changed on the mouse before. Go down to the right strike and change it to the left mouse button. Right upper strike, mouse wheel down, right lower strike, thumb mouse button, left strike, thumb mouse button two, left upper strike to L, using the mouse weird ADS button thing we assigned before, left lower strike to H, using the G8 button we assigned before, and then lastly, you wanna bind left stab to mouse wheel up. If your mouse only has two thumb buttons, then bind right strike to left mouse button, right upper strike to mouse wheel down, right lower strike to thumb mouse button, and then change flip attack side to either thumb button two or something that you're comfortable with to be able to get the swings to do all the left ones instead. You'll be able to hold it down, click the swing, and then it will go the other way. Oh, also bind left stab to mouse wheel up. I've had these controls for so long, I can't remember why I only have left stab bound, but I find left stab is easier to catch people out, so better to have it set to a specific side. Uh, and then when you're done, press apply. Now when you join a game, it should be easy to do every attack you'll need just by remembering which buttons to press. I've tried to make it with the schemes that all right attacks are on the right-ish side and vice versa. 
So now we've got right strike with the left mouse button, right upper strike, mouse wheel down, right lower strike with the thumb mouse button, left strike with thumb button 2, left upper strike using the weird ADS button we set before, and left lower strike using the H on the G8 button we assigned, and then left stab. Like I said before, if you've got the two mouse button, then all of these original right strikes will be the same, but then if you hold that modifier key you did when you strike, you should hit from the other side. Creating a mercenary. I wouldn't worry too much about this right away, but when you have set your controls, come up here to the top left and click on the little torso, then mercenaries. This is truly the lifeblood of Mordhau, which has some of the best customization to make whatever type of build you want in most colors and sizes. There are truly tons of options, although most items are cosmetic and will cost you gold. The main thing you want to think about when creating a merc is balancing armor amounts with speed as the heavier the armor, the slower you will be. You also want to think about the perks as some of these can be pretty useful. I recommend just playing with this builder yourself and using the default classes for now to build gold as they are pretty sweet and at the moment I mostly just use raider or a raider clone anyway. You can even make meme or cosplay builds and all characters come fully equipped with you know different voice lines and faces and you can even edit those faces to make them slightly more unique. Play the game! Right, enough faff, press back fight at the top and let's get into actually playing. Now here's pro tip number one, never press quick play. Even though it looks like the easiest way to find a game, it's not, it sucks, I've never used it. Always click the server browser at the top right. From here you'll be able to see all the servers available to you along with player count and ping. Ping is especially important in this game as if it's anywhere above 65 you're probably not going to have a great time, the lower the better. As a brawl main, and I think it's a better start for beginners to learn the mechanics, how I find a game is as follows. I change the game mode to deathmatch, type in the word brawl, hit refresh, sort by ping, and choose the Europe server, obviously it might be different for you, with the highest number of players I can enter, and double click. When you have loaded into the game, click join the match, select a mercenary, I'll just go raider for now, left click to spawn, and you're in. Now this mode is free for all, so anyone can kill anyone at any time, but generally people don't take this mode that seriously and you can easily spend most of it not fighting or even joining some people. No matter what you do, always be mashing V, mainly because it's fun, and who doesn't like running into fights while screaming like a barbarian or anything. I tried recording this video in many ways, but realised it was actually quite difficult to find a decent way to record combat and be able to explain it at the same time, so I'm just going to jump into a dual server with my friend Plague Dr. Joe, and hopefully can show you a bit of the basics. I hope they make sense. Yeah, so most fights you won't always see this, but it's always good to get into the habit of pressing X1 before a fight to flourish. This tells the other player that you're ready to fight, and they normally respond with the same thing before the fight begins. Until you're better at the game, don't worry too much about speed or trying to get kills quickly. Just work on the timing of a back and forth. Hit, parry, hit, parry. When you've got that down, you can then move on to reposts. A repost means you queue the next attack as soon as you parry and looks like this, allowing you the chance to respond to their attack quicker than if you would have parried and did nothing at all. Try not to panic parry and learn the rhythm. Spamming right click will most likely cause you to be killed very quickly. With feints that we put on left alt, try not to open with them as most veteran players will read it and I personally think it's bad sportsmanship to do so. Instead, during your back and forth, put in one well-timed feint and you should be able to catch them out long enough to get a swing in. Also, your feint wind up is longer than you think, so don't just click feint straight away and try to wait until the last moment possible. To chamber, all you have to do is watch the opponent swing, and then just before it hits you, click the mirror swing to them. So if they throw a right horizontal, you throw a left just before it hits, and then you'll be able to chamber. Excels and drags work by manipulating your swing in different ways. Instead of just standing still during the swing, you can use your mouse movement and footwork to make it sooner or later by either pulling it away with a drag, or accelerating it by leaning in. The reason you do this is to make players parry either too early or too late. What has essentially a game like tennis where two players are just sending it back back and forth, imagine, into your own court, and you'll learn who has initiative the more you play and how the timings work. Thanks. If it was a good fight, you can write good fight in the chat to signify that it's a good fight. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't really know advanced swing manipulation and all of the stuff that makes people insane in this game. And frankly, it is quite difficult to learn. Most of it comes down to muscle memory and footwork, not just the swings. Half the stuff I wing along the way and what works, I tend to just keep doing. Uh, I've been told I have nice drags or excel sometimes, but I don't really know if I'm doing it right or not. The most important thing is to just have fun, see what works, and once it clicks, I'm telling you, there is no other game that hits the same. Nice. 
toxicity and emotes. The last two things I'm going to speak about really shouldn't go into the same category, but this video is getting long and they do kind of tend to go hand in hand. This game can be hella frustrating. And if you do get frustrated as a new player and start to antagonize someone who is good at the game, you're probably not going to have a good time. Don't worry if you can't kill someone a higher level than you yet, but also don't piss them off because then they'll be more likely to target you. The best thing to do is learn how to use the voice and emote system using either the C or X buttons plus any of the numbers. If you are overwhelmed in a fight, all you need to do is crouch spam or emote in a way that lets the other player know that you want to stop. And more than half the time, they will. Instead of being mean, give a little wave and most people will honour it. Even in team battles with someone on the opposing team, although your mileage may vary on that. I've said it before, but I'm not sure the devs realise the gold mine they're sitting on in terms of the non-verbal communication this game has. I wish every game had it. It's the only game where you can fully read someone's body language and communicate without any real life comms. Uh, give a go at learning some of the emotes and the possibilities are not only comedic, but endless. There are so many more things I wish I could explain or show you in this video, but it's getting too long and I've got more how to play. So now I think it's time to give it a go yourself. I hope this video helps you and makes you stick around long enough to learn the mechanics properly and see the true magic behind all of the sweat. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe either here or follow me on Twitch. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the battlefield.